Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everybody doing? I'm running a little bit late. I woke up this morning and started listening to a, a video well, one minute after the rapture, and it's actually really good. I'll uh, uh, post the link to it in a pinned comment in the comment section. Uh, so you, if you guys have time, y'all can go watch it too. It's actually really good. This morning, we're going to be reading out of Song of Solomon 412, A Spring Shut Up, A Fountain Sealed. The whole verse says, A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Well, that's up in my eye now. Ugh. Okay, let's go up and get some context. Start in verse 7. You are all fair, my love, and there is no spot in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Sinir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. You have ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. You have ravished my heart with one look of your eyes, with one link of your necklace. How fair is your love, my sister, my spouse. How much better than wine is your love and the scent of your perfumes than all spices. Your lips, O oh my spouse, drip as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Your plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits. Fragrant henna with spikenard. Spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense, myrrh, and aloes. It's funny because a lot of this stuff that's being mentioned right here, this stuff, that was is what was in um, the uh, the incense used in the temple. They found, a, like, what was it, 600, 900 pounds of it hidden in a cave? Because they've been following these maps that they found. Um, they Supposedly, they found the original tabernacle, too. But in there, they found, like, six, six or 900 pounds of, of this incense. And so they started examining it to see what was in it. A lot of this is here that's mentioned, that's what was in it. It's almost like that's what he's describing. With all the chief spices, a fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Streams from Lebanon. Hmm. Is that like the cedars of Lebanon? And then it ends down here, together in the garden of love, verse 16, Awake, O north wind, and come, O south. Blow upon my garden, that its spices may flow out. Let my beloved come to his garden and eat its pleasant fruits. <coughs> Could be what he was describing. No, no. In this metaphor, and the Song of Solomon uses a lot of metaphor. Like I told you guys, it's, it's a book written, a love letter from Jesus to the church. But it's a book written in code. And we have to decode it. There's a lot in there. In this metaphor, which is reference to the inner life of a believer, we have very plainly the idea of secrecy. It is a spring shut up. There, just as there were springs in the east over which an edifice was built, so that none could reach them save those who knew the secret entrance. So is the heart of a believer when it is renewed by grace. And this is interesting because over in Israel right now, um, under the top end of the old city of David, which they found, its outer walls, is a, uh, the spring of Jeshur. And it's hidden. Nobody knew it was there until they happened to, somebody was on the Mount of Olives looking across. This is a few years ago. I've watched a bunch of that guy's videos. They've, they think they found the real location of the temple. Because um, it had to have flowing water there for them to clean. And in, there was a little hole in the in the cliff cliff face, a, a crack, and water was coming out. And so they went over there, they got up there, they went in, and here's all this stuff carved in the stone where they could butcher animals and rinse everything off it with clean water, flowing water. That was a spring shut up, hidden with a secret entrance. Amazing. There is a mysterious life within which no human skill can touch. It is a secret which no other man knoweth, nay, which the very man who is the possessor of it cannot tell to his neighbor. 
The text includes not only secrecy, but separation. It is not the common spring of which every passerby may drink. It is one kept and preserved from all others. It is a fountain bearing a particular mark, a king's royal seal, so that all can perceive that it is not a common fountain, but a fountain owned by a proprietor and placed specially by itself alone. So it is with the spiritual life. The chosen of God were separated in the eternal decree. They were separated by God in the day of redemption, and they are separated by the possession of a life which others have not. And it is impossible for them to feel at home with a world or to delight in its pleasures. There is also the idea of sacredness. The spring shut up is preserved for the use of some special person, and such is the Christian's heart. It is a spring kept for Jesus. Every Christian should feel that he has God's seal upon him, and he should be able to say with Paul, quote, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Another idea is prominent. It is that of security. Oh, how sure and safe is the inner life of the believer. If all the powers of earth and hell could combine against it, <coughs> that immortal principle must still exist. For he who gave it pledged his life for its preservation. And who is he that shall harm you when God is your protector? Uh, let's see here. <laughs> who that is i was looking back up at that where, where paul said from henceforth let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the marks of the lord jesus i think there was more to that statement that's why they quoted it so within us is a fountain a well and that well is meant to 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 hold a spring of water of life from Jesus. It's funny because Christ put it there, but it's reserved for Christ. We have within us uh, uh, the inner man contained within this form. Our spirit with the Holy Spirit working together. And then it's preserved for Christ. It's something, there are sp things about us that are special that we only. Voice me, okay. So we only hold for each other, or for um, uh, Christ. There's other parts we hold for each other, but there's a special part that's held for Christ only. And the rest of the world won't see it. Our special song for him. Our special uh, um, uh, addresses to him. Special things that we hold dear that, we're, that are for him. And sometimes we may not even know that we do it. We may not realize we do it. <clears throat> it may be that we struggle with trying to see it or, or trying to experience it or, or trying to find what that is. It may be that that is even somewhat hidden from us. It's something special for Christ, just like Christ is something special for each of us. And so it may cause us to pause and, and to think about it, to pause it and to look, to pause and to try to see. Try to figure out what that thing is. I say we take it on faith. We already know it's there because we're saved. But for each one of us, we have a, a special part of us that we reserve just for the Lord. And let us continue to reserve that. Let us continue to keep that part of us hidden from the rest of the world. It's a special love, a special affection, a special <coughs> attraction, a special address for the Lord. Something that only we know. The rest of the world will never know. 
Remember, the Lord is going to give us a little stone with a new name on it, and only us and him will know that name. That's the sign of an individual communication, an individual relationship with Christ. Each one of us has that, and it's amazing. We're gonna pray here in just a minute. I'm gonna pause and go hear that voicemail just in case it's something important. Like, it, hopefully, I don't think that was my mom, but just in case it's something. Okay, it was a social worker from hospice from whenever my uh, mother-in-law and my dad passed. So I'll give her a call back after this. So let's get into prayer. We all know individually, and, and we may not know it to a great degree, but we know individually there's a special part of us we reserve for Christ. Deep down, there's a special part of us. It's okay to do that. It's okay to have that. Make sure my microphone's working. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory and to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Lord, I thank you for this holy word and I thank you for this devotion. We join in prayer every day here on this channel. Sometimes we pray and somebody else on the other side of the world is praying. Same thing at the same time. So in all the times where we come together, there's always this little part that's reserved, a special part. It's communication just between me and you, or someone else and you, or another person and you. Each one of us has that, that individual contact, that individual communication, that, in, that special place where we uh, reside together. Lord, I'm glad that we all have this individual relationship. How impersonal would it be if it was just a group? And I think that the individual connection is by design. I know it is. So that there wouldn't be this, this general acceptance. It would be a very specific understanding. We know in salvation, it is a specific understanding. You, you must know what you believe in. Or who you believe in. And so it, it's not outside the understanding that there is a personal and intimate and special individual connection between us and you. Each one of us. You, When you died for each one of us, our names were there. Our persons were there. Having their debts paid on that cross. You knew who you were dying for. You knew us before the world even began. How amazing. It would be incredible to be able to look a little deeper and to find that person, to find that special place. I don't know if it'd be good for all of us because I think some of us would probably just recluse there and never leave again. But for us to know that there's a special place within us in our heart where us and you reside individually, where we fellowship, where we take time. In this busy world, it's nice to know that there is a, a moments like that. I've had moments like that standing out on the beach. There's no noise. It's just the wind blowing, the waves crashing in the woods. There's no noise at all. I've had those moments where it's like, this is this is the place. Lord, help us to grasp this more. Help us to know that we have a very personal, direct communication and contact with you, a connection with you. It's personal. It's specific. You don't look at the crowd and say, I love all of you. You look at each individual person and point right to them and say, I love you. I love you, I love you, and you call us by name. That's specific. We need to understand that it is much more of a specific connection than a general one. It's much more of a specific belief than a general one. Uh, uh, it's much more of a specific understanding than a general one. Lord, help us to understand that and help us to find it in your word. There's so much more of it in your word. The detail is amazing. Help us to understand that. And it helped because it helps me to see you in a much more personal light, a much more specific light. And in a way, it helps me feel more separate from the world. 
But for us to know you specifically is amazing. And we know there's a day coming when we'll get to see you and be with you and be like you. And then the the specifics will be fully understood. But can we have that, a little bit of that now? Can we understand that specificity now? And I think if we take a little time and just look inward a little bit, read the scriptures, pray about it, we'll understand. Lord, may our relationship with you be a very special, very specific, very personal one. May our connection with you be individual. And may our worship of you be special. Because we know our Lord and he knows us. What more can we have that's better than that? Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. I had a little bit of rain this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the rain. We needed that. I think it rained most of the night last night, so that, that was nice. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful to the Lord that we have a, a personal communication and a personal connection. When we go before the throne, it's not a group of people, it's individuals. We're all individuals. His love for us is individual. He has a, a love for mankind, a general love for his creation, but the love between us as saved individuals is an individual love. He knows you specially. He knows you and I individually. That's a good thing. Because that tells us that he knows a whole lot more about us than what we realize. And the, the scriptures confirm it. We read, the, read them the other day. I have engraved you on the palm of my hand. He doesn't say I've engraved your name. I have engraved you. Your whole person is engraved on the palm of my hand. He knows us that specifically. Every hair, hair on our head is counted and numbered. Our days are marked out. He knows us so specifically. He knows me better than I know me. That's amazing. That shows a, a level of detail I can't possibly reach. But it also shows a level of love I can't possibly understand. For him to know me that specifically, that's love. I love it. It's amazing to me. It's incredible to me. And I praise God for it. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.